Yo. Yo, what's going on, guy? Uh, okay. Yo, we got so much to talk about. Man, I got so many topics that I don't even know if I'm going to have enough to even go through everything, man. A 30-minute podcast that might end up being 45 minutes, man. I don't know. I don't know. But check out some of the topics we're going to talk about today, man. Check it out. Check it out, man. My man Smart Trucking, he dropped a video today talking about five things you need to know about trucking right now. My girl Jay Rich, yes, I reached out to her today. We're going to get that podcast going. Jay, we're going to get it going. One of these days, we're going to get it going, girl. But she said she she did a video talking about what shippers would get you in some messed up situations. Uh, a non-trucking topic. Bar baby, bad baby, bad Barbie. Daniel Bagoli, man. She's in the news making headlines. Donald Trump was on the front lawn thanking truckers? Thanking truckers and giving them keys to the White House or some shit like that, man. That's crazy. And also, Bill Gates and his wife is talking about they donating a lot of money for this vaccine. I don't know, man. Well, let's get into it, man. What's up, guys? Lockout men right here. I am the host of Lockout Men Podcast. I'm coming at you today with the news. Today was a good day for me. You know, I drove all day, delivered, drove, delivered, drove, delivered. I'm a truck driver. That's what I do. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for all content like this this well let's jump into the topics today man let's let's just jump into it all right today's friday so we about to we about to chop it up so my man uh smart trucking over there on on his youtube channel he dropped a video today and uh it's five things that you guys need to know about trucking right now let's see what he has to say about the first one number one this is not the time to lease if there was ever a worse time to lease it's now carriers will be looking extra hard to lease trucks out at this point because they want to bolster their income through this period when freight slows down now with that said man i mean it's it's been going on for months well not months but The last month. That's all I've been hearing on Facebook. Yo, park the trucks because there's no freight. The the brokers is charging cheap freight. I'm not driving because of uh because of cheap freight. And I'm like, oh man, well, how is the freight out there? It must not be good. So I agree with him. This is not the good time to jump into a lease because that truck still needs to be paid every week. And you just don't know that you might not, you you might not be able to pay it because you might not be getting the miles because you probably might be one of those truckers. That's that might be non uh, non essential workers. So if you're not a reefer driver or, you know, pulling toilet paper or sanitizer and shit like that, or medical supplies, then I don't think you is going to be moving. So you might not want to jump into a lease right now. What you got to say for number two, bro? Number two, even if you're an owner operator and you're considering replacing your old equipment for new equipment, once again, this is not the time to be buying a new truck or trailer because once again, You don't know what the market's going to do to your bottom line or how much of a market there's going to be left to operate in. 
Now, <laughs> I'm not interested in buying a truck. At least not now. I'm 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 thinking about it. It's kind of wearing on my mind going into the future. Maybe maybe a couple of years down the line, I probably might save towards a new truck. You know, because I'm talking to people that's that's really planting the bug in my ear. Like, yo, uh, if you're gonna be driving for this long, you might as well invest in a truck. So maybe, maybe, but he's right. This at this point in time, it's the same thing for you lease guys. It is not the time to buy a truck because you don't know where your bottom line is. You got owner operators on Facebook over here talking about parking their trucks because they don't want to pull cheap freight. So this right here at this time might not be the time to uh might not be the time to buy a truck. The third thing you all need to do is keep an eye on your carrier. You've got to focus on how they're managing through this crisis. If you're a new company that hauls essential goods like, like food, for instance, reefer work, food grade tankers, that type of thing, you're probably going to be all right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now he's right. If you're not, if you're not pulling, if you're not pulling food grade, if you're not pulling food grade items or or reefer items, you you you're gonna take a hit. And a lot of companies have laid off a lot of guys so far, you know, because this pandemic really is putting the hurting on the ec I mean on the on the economy. And you know where there's places that's not open, you know, like like auto part I mean like like car car makers, um Furniture places. You know what I haven't seen on the road as of late? Ashley truck. I mean, Ashley trucks. Those Ashley furniture trucks. I haven't been seeing them on the road as of late. Now, I know they pull their own freight, but they also pull outside freight as well. But I haven't seen much of them lately. Now, if you're an Ashley driver, leave it in the comments below. And let me know if if you guys get me any any kind of freight. Yo, what's number four? Number four, load brokers. Stay away from load brokers at this point, or as they like to call themselves, logistics agents. Now, <laughs> I hear a lot of you guys talk about brokers, and I'm I'm gonna need a little bit more uh, information. I'm going to need a, a little bit more learning on how to deal with, with what I know how to deal with brokers because, you know, I I'm, I'm in contact with them all the time and they get on my nerves. Like they call me like every 10 minutes, yo, bro, you got the load yet? You got the load yet? Call me and let me know when you get the load. I'm like, man, come on, man. I mean, this is what I this is what I gotta look forward to when I when I get my own truck. Hostile low, I mean hostile brokers, low ball brokers. I mean, I hear about it all the time in the uh in the Facebook group. So leave your comments in the comments below on on who to deal with. Yo, I'm gonna go ahead and link the rest of his uh video in the description below so you guys could go over there and make sure you subscribe to this dude because this is a good dude he know if you want to know about trucking this guy right here smart trucking is the one to uh definitely subscribe to now i know there's a lot of youtubers out there that says yo we know about trucking and yada 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 but no 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 this dude right here is the truth you might want to go and subscribe to him well moving along man i came across my girl jay rich yes sir jay rich y'all know jay rich you know what i'm saying she has her she has a youtube page her first youtube page got hacked and i don't know what happened but she bounced back you know she was up at like like ten thousand subscribers before her channel got hacked but she's bouncing back she bouncing back, but she made a video that shippers 
will set you up for an accident. Actually, they will, because you'll get into some tight, tight situation like she was in, and they want to put you in the door. They want to put you in the door like, yo, we want you in door five. Okay, well, door five is in between a long nose Pete and another and, and another truck. And you don't have no room at all to back up in there. What she did, let's check out what she did and listen to what she got to say. In these situations, and maybe I could go around and blindside part. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait until this truck get unloaded and I'm going to sit my truck right here until it's time. Don't ever allow these shippers to put you in an uncomfortable situation where you don't feel comfortable enough to back up your truck because they will do it. So I'm going to sit right here patiently and if they end up calling me and like, hey, we need you in the door, I'm like, hey, I can't get my truck in there right now because there's two trucks that are basically blocking you guys could go and uh, check out that video on her channel. The name of the video is called Shippers Will Set You Up For An Accident, which which they will because I've been in a whole bunch of, of, of tight shippers, receivers. Uh, it, it's unbelievable in some situations. I got down, I believe I was in Georgia at Kraft, I think, Kraft and GA. And the only way to get in was like you had to blindside. But luckily for me, I got I I had a late load, I had a late pickup, and I asked the I asked the 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 the, the people. I was like, look, why don't I just wait for that truck right there to move? He'll move out and then I'll back in. I'll have plenty of space to 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 maneuver my trailer into where I need to go. They kind of like, you know, gave me a little bit of, you know, gave me a little bit of problems because they was like, well, you, you got a load that we got to get off. Dude, I've been sitting here all day, like five hours. And you now going to tell me that I have I, I have to get in it in into a door now because I got a load that you have to just get off right now. I mean, if that was the case, then I. I would have been offloaded five hours ago. So, no, I'm going to wait until that truck move out the way. When he moves, then I'll back up into a door. Now, if you get in an uncomfortable situation, like, you know, if, if, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Either A, have another trucker to help you, you know, help you in, or B, just wait for that one truck to move out the way to give you the space you need to back that ass up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Back that ass up. So make sure you go to Jay Rich channel, Jay Rich Live. Make sure you subscribe to her. Let her know that lockout me and Cindy. And Jay Rich, if you see this video, we still got to get together, girl. All right, all right. So this is a non- trucking related uh situation man so, so one of my subscribers sent me this this uh this thing about bad baby b a or b h a d b h a b i e bad baby you guys know who that is that's daniel bergoli the cash me outside girl. The girl is like tanning, like seriously, like tanning, like she's trying to go black. But in this, in this little rant right here, she over here talking about she's upset because everybody is down in her for that picture. Now, when I seen the picture, she looked at black. I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't know what be going through these people's heads. I mean, you know, little Kim, she's trying to go white and bad baby trying to go black. But she also mentioned something about little Kim, too. 
Lil' Kim didn't like that. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see what, what Bad Baby has to say about black people and Tarzan. Tell me I'm trying to be something I'm not and make me out like I'm a bad person. And, and people, this is the reason why people don't even give my, I'm a great fucking artist. I'm a good ass fucking artist. I write my own shit. Uh, ho hold up, hold up, wait. She says she's a good artist. She write her own shit. Yo, what, what hit that she made that makes her a good artist? I mean, she, I mean, the only thing that she came from was Dr. Phil. I mean, if it wasn't for Dr. Phil putting her on, she wouldn't even be in the damn spotlight, man. Or let me rephrase that. If it wasn't for her mother bringing her on the Dr. Phil show to try to get some help for her daughter, which in turn made her a viral sensation because of of what she has said let me see if i can find that video ain't nobody gonna catch me because you're too streetwise yup and all these hoes laughing like so funny talking about the audience that they're laughing at her did, did you say the the, the hoes are laughing yep so the audience are a bunch of hoes yep Catch me outside. How about that? 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 If it wasn't for those, catch me outside. How about that? Seven words. Catch me outside. How about that? She wouldn't even be anywhere on the map. Let's go back to her little rant. I fucking do my shit myself. I, I I don't need nobody, nobody to help me with my shit. I'm good as fuck. Okay, I honestly don't think you're good as fuck. Yeah, I, 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 I think you're. Like I think you're good. Uh, catch me outside. I, I guess, How about that? I guess it's because I guess it's because I, I haven't heard I, the the one song I heard in my opinion, but that's just me. Maybe it's because I'm old, but. I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. They said that the one song that she got has chop uh, has has charted yeah, on the Billboard. How about that? Really? Catch me outside. How about that? Let's see what she had to say about Tarzan. Story of Tarzan. He grew up around the bears in the jungle. He didn't know no better. He the mo the monkeys the mo whatever it was the monkeys or the bears whatever the fuck it was. I thought his friend was a bear. I thought it was a bear. No, that's the Jungle Book. That's the Jungle Book. I don't remember. I don't remember. All I know was he grew up. He yeah. Listen, Tarzan was with the with the monkeys. He grew up with that. That's all he knows. All he knows. All he knows. Catch me outside. How about that? When when someone grows up in a certain area or a certain place they're where that they're, they're exactly they're a part of their environment. They they only know what's been around them. They only know what's been taught to them. I'm sorry I didn't grow up in the fucking suburbs with the white girls with the blonde hair and the blue eyes. Cause you know what? I put money on it. I put goddamn fucking money on it that if I did grow up like that, I would be straightening my curly hair, dyeing my curly hair blonde, and 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 getting um and and, and and getting yeah, getting the spray tan and, and the blue eye. Well, you 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 are getting the spray tans because ain't no way that you're gonna be looking the way that you're looking now if you wasn't getting no damn spray tans. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So with that analogy, she pretty much saying that she grew up in the hood. She grew up with black people. Catch me outside. How about that? So she's a product of her environment. So the, why, the way she talk, her mannerisms, the way she acts is because she grew up around black people. She grew up in the hood. Catch me outside. How about that? Let's see what else she has to say about uh about black people. Let's see what else she had to say about black people. 
act a little bit hood or if I act what y'all would say is is more black. I'm sorry. That's the type of people I grew up around. There, I may do some little things that may make you think that I'm trying to be black, but I'm not. I'm not trying to be black. It's just that's, that. That's just how you are. Not that you're black, but you're just how you are. That's it. There's no explanation. There's no... All right, so that's how she are. It's, it's some chick in the in in the background that's that's doing the talking while she's on uh, Instagram Live ranting and raving about where she grew up at. She's upset because people is talking about her upbringing. I guess. Let's. Let's 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 continue on. Let's let's bring the friend into the picture. Be yourself. People will be trying to like. But my thing, but the thing that just blows me. My thing that just blows me is like, if I was trying to be black so bad, why would black people hang around me? Exactly. I don't think she want to be black, and I'm black. Yeah, yeah. The other girl is black. Here, let me let me show you guys. Hold on. She's black. She's black. <laughs> I'm just saying. She says she's black. So. <laughs> I, I got to. Uh, before I jump. Be, before I jump off of her. I, I, I got to bring up the little Kim. Uh, the, the little Kim. Uh, what she said about little Kim. Daniel, what you say about little Kim? Girl, where's foundation that's too light for her face? The girl went and got a nose job to have to have to, and I'm like I said, no disrespect towards her. She do I don't I don't got no problem with it. She doing what she do and make her happy. That's on her. But like I'm saying, she literally got surgery to make herself look like a white person. She's wearing fucking white like makeup that's light, and y'all don't say a goddamn word about her. Y'all don't say a goddamn fucking word about her. But I put on a foundation that makes me look tan. That makes me look tan. That I didn't even do. That Alex did. I didn't tell him what color to use on me. He, he used whatever color he thought was going to work on me. You hey, told him to use black. That? Come on now. Come on now. You, you're going to actually go up into a spray tan booth and you're going to tell him, hey, bro, go ahead and use whatever color you feel you, you feel is good. Come on now, you're going to go up in there and you're going to be like, he's going to ask you like, yo, what you want to go with? You want to go with a golden brown? You want to go with the, with the, with the, with the, with the high glow? No, I want to be black. And she talked about Lil' Kim like, Lil' Kim? I mean, <laughs> we, we know what Lil' Kim did. You know, we, we can't even tell Lil' Kim right now. But this is, but this is her. This is the picture. I got to show you guys the picture. This is the picture. This is little Kim. That's the cash me outside girl right here. Catch me outside. How about that? Kim, cash me outside. <laughs> Kim snapped back at her ass though. Kim snapped back at her. Kim was like, yo, I'm not going to say much. I'm not going to say much, but I tell you what, you don't know me. You, you don't want none of this smoke. So that what Kim said. Oh, here's the, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, wait, wait. Let's go. We'll kill that. Every small talkers, they ain't number race. Huh? Uh. That was her right there. That was the cash me outside girl. And I couldn't even believe in myself when I seen it. I'm over here like. That's her? That's the catch me outside girl. But anyway, anyway, enough of uh, enough of catch me outside. We <laughs> enough of catch me outside. Like I said, I got so much I got so much to try to squeeze in a half an hour segment, man. It is crazy. And I'm not even I'm not even done yet. Not even done yet. Let's jump Let's let's jump on our president, man. Donald J. Trump. Now, he came on the White House lawn and said, "Yo, 
He's going to praise the trucking industry's pandemic response at the White House for an event to give these truck drivers some keys to the White House, I guess. I don't know. Forget a key, man. Bump all that. Right now, you're going to come after all these years. You, you've been in the White House for how long? Four years? Well, yeah, four years. And you now going to give an event to the American truck driver? The American truck driver. Hold on right quick. Hold on. Hold on. The American truck driver. That's what you're going to do? You, you, after all these years, you're going to finally come out and give us our just due? We, we deserve, we, do, do we, do, we've been saying that we've been underappreciated. We've been dis, uh, we've been disrespected. We've been cut off. The shippers and receivers treat us like secondhand citizens. But now, because of a pandemic going on, and you guys need your stuff right now from the American truck driver, now he's going to come at a White House at a White House event with two trucks on the lawn to thank the American truck driver. Let's see what Donald J. Trump has to say. They are beautiful, beautiful trucks. That's the real deal. You wouldn't switch jobs with anybody, would you, huh? Yes, sir. You wouldn't. I know the truckers. They wouldn't switch with anybody. I would. It's uh, what they love, right? That's why they're good at it. These are the best, too. Well, thank you all for being here as we celebrate some of the heroes of our nation's great struggle against the our brave, bold, and incredible truckers. And uh, look at that equipment. They're the best made in great companies also, and companies that have really helped us a lot. We appreciate that. At a time of widespread shutdowns, truck drivers form the lifeblood of our economy and the absolute lifeblood. For days and sometimes weeks on end, truck drivers leave their homes and deliver supplies that American families need and count on during this national crisis and at all other times. They're what do you guys think about that? He's just now acknowledging the American truck driver. He's just now acknowledging this. Yo, it's a pandemic going on, so we gotta we gotta acknowledge the lifeblood of the American economy, the American truck driver. Bro, you should have been did that long time ago. Like when you got in the office, you should have been did that. You should have said, "Yo, American truck driver, you are the lifeblood of the American economy." They know when you stop, the world stops. And I just want to say thank you. You should have did that way before this pandemic crisis even came into play. He has some people out there, y'all. Let me, uh, let me. He has some people out there that he brought out. Talking guys. That's, that's what I want to say. I, I want to call these. The token guy. How about how about this guy? The token black guy. How about him? Let's hear what he has to say. My name is Charlton Paul. I've been with UPS for nearly 25 years. As growing up, the only thing I wanted to do was sit behind the wheel of one of these massive trucks. It's an honor in having a role in part of fighting this I'm an America's Road Team Captain. I'm a UPS All-Star. Okay. Do you really want to, drivers, do you really want to be honored? And do you, and, and, and let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
we're not doing this just to come out here to help America. Some of you guys is out here for the money. Be honest. Be honest. He's a UPS all-star. Bro, you wanted the money. That's all it is. Oh, I'm honored to, to be out here fighting. the. No, I'm not. The only reason why I am out here is because I got a family to feed. That's it. Other than that, I will be at home with you guys. Seriously. I will be at home with you guys. Other than that, I, I got a family to feed. I got a household. To, I, I got a household to maintain and bills don't stop. So that's why I'm out here. How about this? How about this token guy right here? Got to wait till it load up. How about this token guy? DHL Express, who are picking up and delivering essential shipments every day. We are on the front lines, but we also know that our true heroes are the medical professionals who are battling to save thousands of precious lives each day. It is an honor to support them, especially in the Northeast, where I am based. Within the last month, I've personally transported hundreds of shipments of personal protective equipment and other medical supplies, including several large shipments of, of masks to a private home in, New, in uh, East Brunswick, New Jersey. Now, this guy's from DHL. DHL still running? I thought they was closed down. But, yeah, he, he was, he's delivering up in the Northeast where it's been hit the hardest. And he delivered to this private home of a bunch of masks. I mean, do you guys want to go up in the Northeast? I don't. I don't even go up in the Northeast just because on the regular shit. Now, I know I don't want to go up in the Northeast now because of all that bullshit that's going on. How about this token guy? How about this guy? What you got to say? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. It's 30 years almost. Um, they are an ESOP owned company, meaning we employee owned. We own the company. That makes me very proud to know that I'm part of this, this organization. And rich. Very rich. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, he was talking about a company called BitG. They are an employee-owned company. Now, I used to work for an employee-owned company. That don't mean shit. If a company come and tell you, like, yo, you, you're empl we're, we're employee-owned. The employees don't own shit. They own just a little bit of stock in that company. They don't own nothing, Okay. They don't have no say-so. The only thing that ESOP does is just put a little bit more money in your pocket. But do you have anything? Do you have, do you have any say in the day-to-day -day operations there? Hell, what if you get what what if you get in trouble? You still gotta, you, you still gotta go and face whatever consequences that you know that you gotta face because you got in trouble. But you can go up there and be like, yo, I'm, I, don't, don't I own the company too? Don't I get some say-so? No, bro. You don't get no say-so. You don't get no say-so. The only thing that you get is just a little bit more money. It's not even that much. So when the company turns around and say, yo, we're an employee-owned company. Come work for us. Think about what the quote unquote employee owns think about that how about this token let's see how about this token right here the token the token white girl hold on since the coronavirus hit in the u.s i have seen an increase in red residential delivery of e-commerce at fedex ground my husband dave and i have had a family give us a meal out of the back of their pickup truck at a rest area that they put together for truck drivers. We've received thumbs up from motorists on the highways and have seen people standing on overpasses waving American flags to the passing trucks. Where y'all seeing that at? I mean, I, I, 
I've been driving these highways doing this uh, outbreak, and I haven't seen nobody giving me no thumbs up. I haven't seen no motorists giving me a blow. I mean, I get that, that the the only blowing that I get is to get out the way. Zoom, beep, beep, zoom. That's all I seen. And overpasses, I I don't see nobody waving no flags. Where where y'all see that at? Where she saw that at? Now, I've seen videos of people out of the goodness of their hearts coming up to uh, truck drivers and offering them a meal or offering them to go get a meal. That's good. Thumbs up to you guys, you know. But where, where's the – I haven't seen nobody. I mean, <clears throat> these guys I, – I don't even know where these guys came from. Donald Trump gave them uh gave them all keys and all like that and said, yo, you're the best out here. Keep up the good work. Brother man, I yeah, I I'm gonna keep up the good work because I'm getting paid good money for it. That's that's the only reason. That's the only thing I'm gonna keep up. That's the good work that I am gonna keep up with. I'm gonna keep up the good work because I get paid good money. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But um, you guys could go and uh, check that out. You guys could go and uh, check that out. And, uh, and yeah, tell me what you think. But before we get up out of here, man, my, oh, okay. Before we get up out of here, my dude, my man, D Nitty, always, always, shout out to D Nitty. I, and shout out to Jarvis Jones, too. Between those two guys, them the ones that be hooking me up with 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 all of the with all of the craziness that's be going on out here. D Nitty sent me this. Bill Gates and his wife, they wanted to. They wanted to send some, you know, send billions of dollars for vaccine. But this part right here is is where the controversy comes into play. When I saw what China had to do to, to isolate such an enormous part of their population, my first thought was Africa. How in the world are they going to deal with this? I've been in townships all over Africa in slums. When we talk about in our country physical distancing and then hand washing, if you live in a slum, you can't physical distance. You have to go out and get your meal. You don't have clean water to wash your hands. And so as soon as I saw that, and we know from the foundation's work how quickly disease spreads, I thought, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The first thing that I thought about was Africa. How Africa going to handle handle social distancing? They can't handle social distancing because they all got to be in the same in the same area. They can't wash their hands. I thought about Africa after China. That's the first thing you thought about was Africa. I mean, look, look, bruh, I, I don't know. I really don't. I'm speechless on this one, bro. I really don't know. I mean, these is two billionaires. Like they, they like they in an area that I don't even understand. So, yeah, yeah. Think about that, Africa. I thought about China after what's going on in China. First thing I thought about was Africa. What about the American where you actually live at? They can't do no social distancing over there. Of course not. I don't know. But anyway, anyway, well, that is it. That is it. I, I don't know how long this uh, podcast uh, went. But like I said, I, I knew it was going to go over 30 minutes because it was a lot today. But I'm glad that you guys stayed with me and um, 
and uh and rocked out with your boy if you like content like this and more don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more content like this i am your humble host lockout men and this is lockout men podcast so keep the conversation going if you guys want me to want me to talk about something yo hit me up in the gmail at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com come over to instagram subscribe over there holler at your boy in the dm over at instagram or you can just hit me up right here in the comments below and i will definitely get back at you guys um if you you yes you you want to come on the podcast and chop it up with your boy get at me lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com and we'll get in and we'll chop it up. Until next time, y'all, y'all take it easy. Have a blessed one. Stay blessed. And on that note, we are gone.